So the Twin Cities make happy lists all the time, you know, the good lists. So when we get a bad list listing, it sticks out. We get hit right in the feelings. That's right. But suck it up, Buttercup, because tonight we channel that anger <laughs> into fact. As we look into the latest report that names Minneapolis as one of the top 10 cities where you can make $100,000 a year and still feel broke. Is that true? How did this report even come to that conclusion? And are we really more expensive than New York City? USA Today and CNBC just picked up this little report calling Minneapolis the eighth most expensive city on the where you can earn six figures and still be broke list. According to the math of magnifymoney.com, a $100,000 annual household income will leave the average two-parent, one-kid household with just $411 in disposable income a month. $411. And that's not accounting for extra savings. According to that same report, if you made that much money in, say, Detroit, Dallas, Houston, or Miami, you would have three times more spending money after bills each month. Bold statement. But is it true? And is it verifiable as a claim? The report says it went to the Federal Housing and Urban Development Department for statistics. According to HUD, the average monthly cost of housing in Minneapolis is more than $1,800. And the average cost of transportation each month is more than $1,200. The report also cites the website care.com, not to be confused with care11.com, for the average cost of child care for one kiddo in Minneapolis, which they say is $922 a month. So we went out to find our own data from a local source. We went to the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development. And what we found is changing a few of the stats can really change the whole picture. The magnifymoney.com report was off by more than a thousand bucks a month, according to our figures, overestimating numbers for housing, transportation, and childcare. By our statistics, the average three person family making $100,000 would have more like $1,400 left over after bills every month putting Minneapolis more like 60th on this list. Big difference. We reached out to Magnify Money for a response. Executive editor Mandy Woodruff said, quote, due to the nature of this study, we were comparing metros across different states and even some that cross states. We have to use data for each metric that is available for every area we're covering in our analysis, end quote. Fair enough, apples to apples, I suppose. But is it accurate? Our numbers say no. All right, so it's the same data for each city. They want to pull from a source that has data for every city. But again, does it make it accurate? I don't know. But even if you say families are making $100,000 and they only have $400 a month to spend, what about families more like the real average that are making $53,000 or $55,000? They're not breaking. They don't have money then, according to those stats. According they don't to have their money. metrics. Yeah, yeah, that's why I don't understand it. That doesn't make sense. So I, I don't know. I find these studies, they're always a little always bit, there. you got to be skeptical when you see we're the best at this. And you've got to look at, like Chris did, how they're coming to that conclusion. What numbers are they taking? Because we saw a study about six months ago that was talking about this being the most expensive place to live. And they were using the price of bread mm -hmm. as one of their metrics. So since we pay $2 for bread, it's way worse. You also have to be careful on these studies because when you click on stuff on that website, it'll take you to all sorts of different financial advertisements. That's what they're there for. Dark web. Dark. All right.